Aloha. Welcome to Global Connections. I'm Grace Chang, the host of this program, and I'm joined here today by Dr. Jennifer Lynch, research biologist at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, as well as Dr. Brenda Jensen, professor of biology and the dean of the College of Natural and Computational Sciences at the Hawaii Pacific University. And our topic for today is the science of pollution in the Pacific, which is perfect as Earth Day is this Saturday. So we'll be talking about all of the collaborations between the NIST and HPU's sciences department. So welcome to you both, Jen and Brenda. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming on the program today. And this is a very eventful week, so it's great to have you here talk about, you know, what we've been doing as far as the sciences working on relation to the environment on this, the week of Earth Day, coming up on Saturday. Um, so I'm very excited to hear about what kinds of works you're doing today uh, uh, together between NIST and HPU. But could, uh, first, um, let's hear a little bit about yourself, um, Jen. You're working at the National Institute of Science and Tech Standards and Technology, or can I just say NIST, yes. <laughs> just to yes. keep it brief? Okay. Please. Um, so yeah, what is NIST? NIST is a federal science agency, mm -hmm. and we are um, responsible for setting the standards for any kind of measurement, and that includes time, length, width or, or um, weight um, and it can include healthcare measurements so in biology and chemistry um, and I'm inside the chemical sciences division mm -hmm. and we have about 162 people that work for the chemicals division um, and 12 of those are scientists that travel out here and work in the US Pacific Islands. Uh -huh. So we have a Pacific Islands program okay. within NIST mm -hmm. and um, I'm the only one that lives and works here in Hawaii. Everyone uh -huh. else is on the mainland Okay. Um, and my office is at HPU so there's a mm -hmm. direct connection mm -hmm. between uh, the two institutions. Um, and the 12-member team at NIST out here in the Pacific, we focus on three activities. And one of those is archiving environmental samples in a state-of-the-art cryogenic specimen bank. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like your bank. You put money in, we're putting uh -huh. samples in that will grow in value over time. And then someone uh -huh. in the future who may have a biology or a chemistry um, study, they can withdraw those samples and use those for research uh -huh. for things we can't even think about right now. Oh, great. So those uh -huh. samples become more valuable. Mm -hmm. The second thing that we do is develop methods to measure chemicals better. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily only mean chemical contaminants, but chemicals in general. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's another thing that we do. And then the third activity that our Pacific Islands program does is withdraw samples out of that specimen bank mm -hmm. and answer research questions for the region about those. And mm -hmm. those kinds of studies have, um, they, they range from things like ocean chemistry mm -hmm. and how ocean chemistry is affecting coral reefs uh -huh, all the yeah. way to um, measuring chemical pollutants in things like seabirds, sea turtles, and marine mammals. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I mean these are all very important issues. I think we hear, we've been hearing especially about the coral reefs being damaged by changes in the water quality and so forth, so yeah. important work. And has NIST always been uh, in, housed it at Hawaii Pacific University? No, not always, mm -hmm. no. Um, I was relocated here to Oahu in 2014, mm -hmm. so fairly recently, okay. and uh -huh. uh, when I first moved out here, I was in the NOAA facility out at Ford Island, okay. and moved over to HPU in 2015, I believe. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. So Brenda, um, how has uh, HPU's sciences program been working with this? Like, what kind of collaborations have there been? Yeah, so our, our collaboration actually started in 2010, mm -hmm. and Jennifer, when she was based in Charleston, was one of the original collaborators with that group. And so we actually have been, the mechanism for our collaboration is a grant that's mm -hmm. issued from the National Institutes of Standards and Technology. And so we have been able to benefit from that grant to be able to support students and research projects that have actually been uh, great opportunities to benefit from the science that NIST brings to the table. Mm -hmm. you know, they're they're um, state-of-the-art analytical techniques 
mm -hmm. enabled us to take a look at the specimens that we had in hand and that we were able to go out and actually get from different indi indicator species in the Pacific to be uh -huh. able to take a look at what is the contaminant burden in some of our key species here in Hawaii. And then that also allowed us to capitalize on some of the specialties with, with me and with other scientists that are in, on the science staff to be able to enhance, you know, we brought our own research to the yeah. table to go along with those an, those analytical numbers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, I mean, this is really important for understanding what's going on in, in the waters around us and, and the environment around us. Um, so, what are some specific examples you, you can tell us about some of the collaboration and, and the research between HPU and NIST? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in mm -hmm. first. Um, really, the, the collaboration started because of our the sample set that was actually in hand mm -hmm. that actually came from the the stranding network and so Christy West as stranding director actually had uh -huh. a, a suite of samples that had been collected prior to our collaboration with NIST but that was a, a big program that we wanted to get started and since then it's grown to be different species but from that original work we actually had a Master's of Science in Marine Science student, Melanie Bachman, who actually mm -hmm. was able to publish two first authored papers mm -hmm. from the work actually analyzing the what we consider to be now legacy contaminants. And so uh -huh. there's, uh, both Jen and I have a, a, a bit of a background in organic chemical analysis. And so the organics that we were looking at for this study actually uh -huh. have been, they've been they're not legal to use or to deposit in the environment for a very long time. In fact, uh -huh. about 40 years, they've all been outlawed in the uh -huh. United States, but yet they are still cycling in the environment. And so we wanted to ask the mm -hmm. question because nothing had been published in Hawaii for about 40 years. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to ask the question, what are those levels now mm -hmm. in, in the species that are swimming in Hawaiian waters? And it was very interesting to learn that our sample size was about 42 animals, and about 17 of those animals were pushing thresholds for reproductive toxicity and wow. immunosuppression uh -huh. and all the things that we've continued to mm -hmm. worry about you know, with this suite of contaminants. Mm -hmm. So the meaning of legacy contaminant, is that's a contaminant that was, that was used before they were outlawed, and it still remains in our environment in the waters. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm yeah. getting intimidated <coughs> by the science. I went to math and science high school, but that was high school. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, that's um. So, uh, is there another example? Sure. Uh, yeah. So that's an example looking uh -huh. at the marine mammals, uh -huh. and um, I, you know, I think that one is a, a sadder story because mm -hmm. those marine mammals have very high levels and. Um, are at levels that we're very concerned about. Mm -hmm. Another example is another student from HPU mm -hmm. traveled to Charleston um, to the Hollings Marine Lab where NIST mm -hmm. has its state-of-the-art analytical lab um, where Melanie Bachman also went. So there's oh, actually great. been seven uh -huh. Hawaii students that have traveled uh -huh. to the mainland to do the analysis. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's a really nice um, collaboration that we have going on. It's education mm -hmm. and it's technology transfer is going on. So in this particular example, we looked at the Hawaiian green sea turtle and mm -hmm. fibropapillomatosis. And I'm sure a lot of the Hawaiian <laughs> population has seen these very ugly visible tumors yes, all over the yeah. Hawaiian green turtle. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the disease is declining, mm -hmm. but it's still a very mysterious disease. We know that a, a virus is the thing that triggers the, the tumor formation, but the way the disease um, shows up in certain areas and not in other areas makes scientists believe there may be some kind of environmental cofactor, some mm -hmm. pollutant or something that is making this set of turtles get the disease and not this set. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for four decades, scientists have speculated that environmental pollutants may be playing a role in this disease, but it hadn't really been tested robustly with science. Mm -hmm. And so through this HPU student, um, Franny Nelson, mm -hmm. she came and she analyzed uh, a bunch of Hawaiian green turtle samples for 164 organic pollutants. Mm -hmm. And what the results showed is, in fact, these compounds do not seem to be the trigger okay. for FP. Uh -huh. So that means that scientists can stop speculating mm -hmm. on that and focus on other things that, mm -hmm. that might also be the cause. So it kind mm -hmm. of shifts our, our attention. Mm -hmm. um, 
to something else. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, how do you, how do you uh, gain a sample from, from the sea turtles? Is that, that must, sounds very challenging. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is challenging. So for the sea turtles, we, we collaborate with other um, researchers that are out in the field uh -huh. working with these animals. NIST doesn't go out and actually um, try to do the sampling. We mm -hmm. partner with other people. And so in that case, we partnered with NOAA uh, Hawaii Preparatory Academy over on the Big Island mm -hmm. and um, USGS mm -hmm. as well. And um, so those researchers are out there actually catching the sea turtle while snorkeling oh, or okay. with nets uh -huh. in a safe way and they're mm -hmm. permitted to do so. Mm -hmm. And then the, the turtle is brought on shore mm -hmm. onto a boat and then blood samples were taken for that study. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is great to hear how much collaboration there is across different institutions yeah. um, and really to help the state. So some, in very concrete ways, huh? We all have to work together. There's mm -hmm. so few people in science and such a big need. We have to, we have to come together. Uh -huh. Really, so few people in science. You think that we, we could really boost our, our, you know? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yes. <laughs> There's more interest. Yeah. From it's a little bit self-serving as the need of sciences, but yes, we need more scientists. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. We need to train up more. Mm -hmm. There's always mm -hmm. more questions than we can possibly answer, and there's never enough funding. And there's more students coming and asking for our help than we can uh -huh. can give yeah. because we're so busy with everything else. And right, right. more graduates looking for jobs that are needed. Mm -hmm. but the other mm -hmm. factor is that a lot of our species here in Hawaii are protected. Yeah. And so it's it's not a we have to work together because mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we've got every species and species needs taken care of. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of permitting that goes in that are involved in accessing these organisms and we want to make sure that we're doing the absolute best mm -hmm. protecting the species. That you know, that doing that job has to be done properly and with specific methodology and so we we are fortunate to have a lot of experts on island and particularly with NOAA colleagues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I mean, these, these national uh, science organizations have the technology, so that seems like that, that bit of the collaboration is really key, right, to give other institutions access or able to, to work right. together using that. And I mean, it's particularly important, like hearing what you're, you know, discussing about how, how some of these, you know, the research, for example, with, with the sea turtles and the tumors, I mean, there's a, there's a definite methodology that, that is, and, and um, you know, there's standards behind how we eliminate these type of hypotheses. I think, you know, it sounds like this is something we need more education of, I mean, in the, in the popular popular media, I don't think we appreciate enough how much goes behind um, the scientific testing. And, and yeah. Science is hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For instance, yes. <laughs> when Franny came to Charleston to analyze that sample set of, of sea turtles, mm -hmm. it took her three months to mm -hmm. get the data to a point where she could come back here and then explore the data and analyze it. So it takes a very long time to get the answers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Science takes persistence. Yeah, yeah. So what are some ways that this has helped Hawaii so far, like that we, we might know about uh, some of the collaborations between <laughs> <laughs> this and HPU? Well, I think that actually shedding light on some of these questions about contaminants has actually been mm -hmm. really a, a great thing for Hawaii. It's been mm -hmm. great for our students who are participating in the research. Mm -hmm. We've already kind of talked about how great the training is and how wonderful it is to be able to have our students have access to state-of-the-art techniques mm -hmm. and be able to address the questions mm -hmm. that hadn't been touched in quite a long time and mm -hmm. sometimes that's surprising to students just how much how many of those basic questions are not answered because mm -hmm. it, it takes such a huge amount of resources to actually address the questions especially like I said with those protected and hard mm -hmm. to reach species yeah sounds like it all right <laughs> well thank you Brenda and Jen so we'll come back in a minute and, and finish up this discussion Great. all right thank you all for, for joining us stay tuned we'll be back in one minute on global connections Aloha, my name is Justine Spiritu. This is my co-host Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m. on ThemeTech, we host the Hawaii Food and Farmer series. We like to bring in folks from the whole realm of the local food supply and agriculture, anyone working on these issues, any organization or individual that has plans or projects. What kind of people have we had on? 
Uh, so we've had farmers, we've had chefs, we've had people from government, uh, larger institutions, everyone who's working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So you can see us every Thursday and join the conversation on Twitter, and we hope to see you there. Aloha, welcome back to Global Connections. I'm your host, Grace Chang, joined here today by Dr. Jennifer Lynch of the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and Dr. Brenda Jensen, the Dean of the College of Nat Natural and Computational Sciences at Hawaii Pacific University. And we're talking about the science of pollution in the Pacific. So welcome back to the program. Uh, wonderful conversation about the collaborative work between NIST and HPU on, on studying the environment and all these factors that might be contributing to some, some problematic changes. Um, so interesting to hear about your past collaborations. And, and what about some ongoing or, or future projects that you have in store? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, NIST and our Pacific Islands program we are always keeping our eyes open for what kind of chemical measurement needs are here in the Pacific region. Mm -hmm. And um, they don't necessarily have to be environmental pollution. Um, we can study things as diverse as, say, drug discovery from marine um, organisms uh -huh. or um, chemical needs of the aquaculture industry, which is a, a big part of Hawaii's mm -hmm. um, economy, and even human health. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to walk away from the environmental sciences either. Mm -hmm. And I can say we have some interest in looking at chemicals in water. Mm -hmm. Water is a big concern for human health. Yes. And uh -huh. with um, our drinking water needs and also our wastewater problems here with sewage pollution mm -hmm. into the marine environment is mm -hmm. something that NIST is Mm -hmm. considering and looking at as being important for something that we help with mm -hmm. here in the region. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that we're doing right now um, is looking at marine debris. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about legacy pollutants that are pesticides or industrial compounds that you can't see these chemicals. Mm -hmm. But plastics, we all can walk onto the beach, yeah. pick them up, see them, feel them. And so we really everyone can see this impact. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's an increasing threat to our ecosystem and I would say our Hawaiian economy mm -hmm. because tourists come here to mm -hmm. enjoy the beautiful living coral reefs yes. and the beautiful sandy beaches. And mm -hmm. marine debris threatens both of those. Mm -hmm. And so it's something for us to really take seriously and really look into. And, HPU students and University of Hawaii students have been working mm -hmm. with me to measure the amount and the type of plastics that sea turtles are ingesting. So oh. the sea turtles that are swimming out in the pelagic ocean, and these turtles are, are being sampled all the way from north of Hawaii to just north of American Samoa. Mm. Um, and so they, they're, they're captured on the longline fishery and some of them drown and oh, those no. are put in the fish mm -hmm. hold and brought back here for full necropsy. Mm -hmm. And we're able to look throughout the entire gut of wow. the turtle. And what we found is they eat a lot of plastic. Mm -hmm. It's quite striking when you see it with your own eyes uh -huh. and you hold it in your hands. Yeah. Um, the they don't dissolve. You can actually still no, see them. Yeah, no, uh -huh. the plastics Eesh. do not dissolve in the gut of any animal. Mm -hmm. No, it's mm -hmm. a very persistent material. Mm -hmm. And so what we found is that the olive ridley sea turtles, every mm -hmm. single one of them has eaten some plastic piece. The green mm -hmm. sea turtles are eating the most. Mm -hmm. And so there are some species differences that are interesting. And the newest thing that we have going on is Melissa Young's um, master's thesis at HPU, she's actually identifying the plastic polymer. So if you look on the bottom of your water bottle, it has a little recycle code with yeah. a number in it. Uh -huh. There's, I believe, eight numbers. And each number identifies what kind of plastic that is mm -hmm. and tells you whether you can recycle it in your area or uh -huh. not. Well, when we pull these out of the turtle, they don't have the little symbol mm -hmm. on it. So we use chemical instrumentation mm -hmm. to know what kind of polymer it is. And people might wonder, well, what's the importance of doing that? And 
the reason is each polymer has a different density in seawater. So mm -hmm. some are going to sink mm -hmm. and some are going to float. So which are the ones that turtles are eating? I see, yeah. And uh -huh. which are the ones uh -huh. that are ending up on our beach? So the, yeah. the polymer type and the density can tell us how these marine debris pieces are moving mm -hmm. through the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, it can also tell us certain polymers will have a different affinity for persistent organic pollutants, mm -hmm. the chemicals that Brenda and I have spent our careers studying. Mm -hmm. Those pollutants will absorb onto these plastic pieces in the ocean. Really? And then an really? animal eats those, it's another potential source mm -hmm. of being exposed to oh, wow. these compounds. Mm -hmm. And so the different polymers will sorb different organic contaminants differently. So that's important to know what polymer the uh -huh. turtle is eating. Uh -huh. And the other thing is just simply to say, hey, it's mostly this plastic and this plastic, so mm -hmm. that society mm -hmm. can make changes on yeah. production or use or waste disposal. Like, mm -hmm. let's start recycling mm -hmm the ones mm -hmm. that we're finding in marine debris. There mm -hmm. may be incentive to keeping them out of the ocean. Right, right, because particularly important since they do tend to be the, the, what gets into and ingested by the sea animals. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is really important work that I think we're, we're this is something people can, can witness themselves because they see a lot of that debris around on the beaches and right. hopefully we can address that. So. I mean, as far as what people can do to help or get involved in, in these kinds of efforts, even if they're not scientists yeah. or if they are, or, you know, burgeoning young scientists. <laughs> yes, and, and this, is, this is definitely one obvious thing that Hawaii, I think, is very good at is our beach cleanups. Mm -hmm. you know, that's a very tangible way that we can go out there and just take something that shouldn't be floating around being ingested by a marine organism, we can actually pick it up off the beach mm -hmm. and get it out of the way and you know get it to where it should be, away from the environment. You know, and just using less. You know, yeah. being able to be aware of our own habits and, and be aware of our own role in the economy, mm -hmm. just to try to have less of less waste in general. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a, a huge challenge and sometimes it feels like what can I do? as one person, but if more people are thinking about it, more people are doing it, more people are using less, mm -hmm. then it certainly is yeah. something that we can, we can together make an impact. Mm -hmm. Collectively, um, together, all making small changes can, can make a big difference. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the, and the public education about this, I think, is, is really important. Um, and so, you know, we have Earth Day coming up on mm -hmm. Saturday. And there is a, uh, a March for Science that will be taking place in, in various cities, including in Honolulu. So is there anything, anything being planned for, for us here in, on the islands on Saturday? Well, we've got a, a huge, uh, important lineup for science uh, on the HPU front. Mm -hmm. We're actually at the Hawaii Loa campus. We're hosting a, um, a, a STEM event, so mm -hmm. for STEM awareness for girls from sixth to ninth grade mm -hmm. to come and do some hands-on, exciting, uh, get them excited about all the different things that they can do with being a STEM major and, and aiming for STEM careers. And that'll be in the first chunk of the day. And mm -hmm. then, of course, the March for Science is from 3 to 7 at mm -hmm. UH. And HPU, two of our colleges, the Natural and Computational Sciences and Health and Society, are actually in, have endorsed the event. And we will have booths there. And our robotics club will be there. Mm -hmm. and, and we will have, uh, hopefully, representatives. You can come and meet a scientist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was an interesting statistic that was put out recently that pointed out that many people felt like they did not know a scientist, that they uh -huh. couldn't name a scientist, that they, and this was like 70%, I think, was the figure that 70% of Americans uh -huh. did not know or could not name a scientist. And oh, wow. so we'd like to change that. Yeah. And so uh -huh. the organizers of the, of the march have done an amazing job. I think they're going to have a very great event. And so mm -hmm. everyone should definitely come. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Yeah, I mean, even though you're super brilliant people, but you're not scary. But <laughs> also, I mean, you're doing a lot of interesting things and in that, you know, like, it seems like there's very different, you know, different roles that everyone can play, whether they're in different aspects of the sciences or different kinds of research. Um, or as members of society, different kinds of actions they can take and be involved in. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely support the March for Science. I'll be coming out and coming mm -hmm. to the booth to 
to spend some time there and mm -hmm. just coming out to support science in general I think is is something that the community can do just mm -hmm. to say science is important mm -hmm. you know we we all are living much longer because of science yes, and the medical uh, developments that science mm -hmm. has brought mm -hmm. and we live such happier higher quality lives because mm -hmm. of science mm -hmm. so yeah, and, and Brenda, you mentioned STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And this has been something we hear a lot. Educational institutions have been wanting to promote, you know, students' involvement and, and, and investment in, in STEM research. Do you see that this is, you know, this is mostly what, from my, what I hear, you know, it's coming from the education sector. And do we see kind of support for that beyond within the education sector, support for, for helping to grow STEM, support STEM. This is a really important time. We're, we're in a, a rather, I think, awkward time where our politically science, I don't think, is, has a very uh, solid grounding right now. And mm -hmm. so we've got a lot of important questions of, that as a nation that we need to address. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's all the more important for those of us that are in the STEM fields to be able to express why this is so important, mm -hmm. you know, why these questions need to be answered, why our economy depends on all of these STEM fields, and why our mm -hmm. uh, society, you know, needs to care about these issues. And so it's really important. So um, if you're, if any, any young girls are out there that are interested in participating in the event on Saturday, it's sponsored by the AAUW, Honolulu mm -hmm. Chapter, mm -hmm. which is the American Association of University Women. And the event is called uh, Tech Savvy. Okay, <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brenda and Jen, for joining us here today on Global Connections and for talking about the science of pollution in the Pacific and all the research that you do. And, and, and thank you for doing that research. And, so thank I you hope for the opportunity. Yeah, yes, good. thank you for having us. Thank you. And, and for those of you who have been tuning in, thank you for joining us on Global Connections today. And check out the events at, on Earth Day this Saturday that Brenda and Jen have mentioned. And see you next Thursday at 1 p.m. Aloha.